Some gamers would actually argue that Nvidia's DLSS 4 technology is a much bigger announcement than a Blackwell generation as a whole. On this video I'll be comparing DLSS 4 different settings using 5 different games powered by 5 different game engines using 4 different settings, native, quality, performance and ultra performance. Please notice that I'll be skipping balance setting to keep this video short enough. All the games will be run on the very maximum settings apart from motion blur which in my opinion makes the games look much worse rather than better. As graphics card I'm using RTX 1490 and the rest of the specs you can find in the description down below. For the monitor I'll be using this 38 inch ultra wide gaming monitor running 3840 by 1600 resolution. Please notice that on this video I won't be comparing the LSS 4 with older version because long story short the LSS 4 should probably be used whenever possible as long as the game is using DirectX 12. Unfortunately to my understanding as of now the LSS 4 is not working with games running DirectX 11, Vulkan or some other API. In Silent Hill 2 Remake we can see that in native this game looks really nice and by the way this fog is a huge element of this game so picture quality should matter at least on some degree. Unfortunately this game still suffers from that annoying Unreal Engine 5 stuttering which is still something worth noting regardless of what kind of hardware you are running this game game on. Changing the DLSS quality to quality, we can see that this fence looks a bit worse compared to native but other than that the visual appearance is still nice I would say and I would personally appreciate this FPS rather than having this fence look much prettier and still having the game run on pretty much about 50 FPS. Changing the DLSS setting to performance this fence looks even worse compared to DLSS quality and in this stage it can be kind of um, a huge trade-off in terms of can we see through this fence or whatsoever objects or not and it's up to you of course to decide whether you will value these additional FPS for the cost of this visual appearance. In DLSS Ultra Performance I would say that this doesn't look good at all because this fence is flickering all the time and this can be annoying in some situations because you don't know is there something moving and about to surprise you or is this just this kind of random flickering thanks to DLSS setting. And in terms of performance when we compare this same scene against each other using different settings we can see that the FPS is changing depending on a DLSS setting which is nice. Also this can affect the GPU power consumption meaning noise levels of course and also VRAM usage as well if your card is having less than 60 gigs of VRAM. Interestingly the GPU usage is still staying the same regardless of the DLSS setting which is nice because then we know that this game definitely utilizes this GPU. In the static scene as this one we can notice that this glass in distance is having this kind of flickering effect whatsoever even though I'm running the game on native setting and when we check the level of detail of this chair we can see that there are some scratches or whatever on this leather chair I would say it looks really nice but this also comes at cost because even though we are inside this building and there is not much going on in this scene whatsoever but please notice that FPS is about 40 which to me is a way low even for the low pace game like this one and when we move around we can see these lockers here, they're looking really nice in terms of visual appearance but unfortunately the game feels very laggy thanks to low FPS. Changing the setting to DLSS quality we can see that this window in distance to me looks much better compared to the native which is extremely interesting. I would much rather appreciate this setting over native and we are getting a maybe 50 to 16 FPS more in this scene, still sub 60 unfortunately. Level of detail of these textures is I would say good enough if anything else and um, the game is much more responsive compared to the native settings and also looking at these lockers I cannot see any kind of the graphical errors whatsoever so I wouldn't kind of distinguish this uh, compared to native whatsoever. In the LSS performance this glass looks a bit too blurry in my opinion but we still don't have that flickering effect compared to the native setting. 
Looking at the texture quality, I would say they look quite okay. It's not something I would basically even notice by playing this game in DLSS performance. These lockers are also looking quite okay, I would say. I cannot see much of a difference compared to quality. There's some little flickering here and there in terms of sharp edges, but nothing kind of dramatic. And I would still appreciate this additional FPS compared to having everything in place and still running the game in 40 FPS. In DLSS Ultra Performance mode, we can see that this glass in distance looks even more blurrier, but interestingly enough, there is some kind of movement going on on the surface. We can see that it looks like it's some liquid whatsoever rather than glass and I couldn't personally accept that regardless of having this additional FPS but of course when we look on the texture detail we can see that there is definitely some blurriness going on once we stop the camera that the details will pop up eventually but the blurriness are still there and uh, while we look at these um, lockers here we can see that there is a lot of going on in terms of flickering a lot of sharp edges harsh edges whatsoever and i would say that i would personally avoid this setting as a whole unless you are running this game on a very low hardware and you really need to push these uh, even last fps to make this game playable in Plague Tale Requiem, I'm running this game with a native setting and interestingly enough in this game, this FPS is pretty much all over the place. If I move the camera quickly around, the FPS will drop and it can be sub 50, about 40 something and it in some situation which where the camera is not moving quickly, the FPS can be over 100. In the LSS quality mode, we can see that the game still looks really nice. I kind of couldn't distinguish this from native. Maybe some little details here and there if we pause the picture and kind of try to compare this, uh, the visual appearance next to each other. But other than that, it still looks really nice. And we are, of course, getting additional FPS, which is much appreciated in a heavy games like this one. In the DLSS performance mode, we are starting to get these kind of sharpie edges here. When we pay attention to this floor, we can see that there is some little flickering happening here and there, depending on how quickly we are moving. And to me, this is a good example that um, these games can still look quite well. And we are getting that additional FPS, but nevertheless, we are still having that um, worse visual appearance. Changing the setting to ultra performance, this is where the things are getting kind of too rough in my opinion. And now when we see Amicia moving this light all around, that these edges are way too sharp in, in my opinion. I would say that occasionally this looks and reminds me on some kind of PlayStation 3 game whatsoever. Comparing these settings against each other, we can see that the FPS is changing to somewhere the LSS performance mode and after that we are not getting any additional FPS whatsoever regardless of settings loading, looking much worse. In this scene over here, the wall in the distance looks the best in native mode. Interestingly enough, in performance mode and ultra performance mode, the FPS is about the same. However, GPU usage is lower in ultra performance for about 10%. This can also be seen in the terms of GPU power consumption, which in ultra performance mode is about 50 watts less. In Alan Wake 2, on the very maximum settings, especially with the frame generation turned off, I would say that this game is one of the best looking PC games at the moment, which obviously comes at the cost because when we check that this game is running on about 30 to 40 FPS with RTX 1490. And I would say that uh, the environment looks really nice. The mood is really kind of uh, realistic, if I can say it in that way and the depth of detail of these textures is extremely extremely nice of course we should also pay attention to how much vram this game consumes and in this scene we can say that the consumption is about a bit over 14 gigs of vram which is obviously nice to keep in mind if you're after your next gpu moving the settings to from native to quality we can notice that there is a slight degradation in quality nothing major and i would say that a lot of these details wouldn't even be noticeable unless we are comparing them 
to each other. Looking at this sun here, we can see that there is a slightly glitchy effect behind this pole where the sun does not disappear correctly in my opinion. But other than that, the game still looks amazingly good and I wouldn't kind of miss that native setting compare how much more FPS we have in this scene right now, which is approximately, I would say, maybe 20 to 30 FPS more. Moving the setting to performance mode, I would say that there is a still a slight degradation in quality as if expected. These hay boxes here look a little bit rough at the edges, or should I say these peaks over here. The level of detail of these textures is still nice and good enough, if I can say. Um, and this sun here is still glitching, is glitching even more compared to the previous setting. As we can see, the sun is not disappearing behind this pole at any point. And that's something what I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker, but it's still something worth noting. And changing the setting from performance to ultra performance, we can see that this is even worse in terms of graphical appearance. The game still looks nice, I have to admit, although some edges are a little bit too rough in my opinion. The level of detail of these textures is still there. I cannot notice any blurriness while moving the camera with this space. Um, this sun here is also still glitching, the kind of error is a even bigger compared to the performance mode, but then again, considering that this is a story-driven game, and I would say that majority of gamers wouldn't even notice this, the distance is a little bit more blurry compared to these other settings, but nevertheless, I would still assume that uh, considering that we are running this game on our 100 FPS and using about 12 gigs of VRAM, I, I could kind of accept the situation considering how heavy this game can really be on native settings. In Battlefield 2042, the reason why I'm including this game in this test is because upcoming Battlefield game will most likely be based on this same game engine. Comparing these three DLSS settings against the native in this game, we can notice that the native is definitely the sharpest one, but I would say that some gamers would still appreciate for example, DLSS performance mode, because we are getting about 40 to maybe even 50 FPS more, the TDP usage is lower, VRAM usage is also lower, and graphical appearance is not that bad, to be honest. Yes, the background is a little bit more blurry compared to native, but other than that, it would still be good enough, especially in the online shooters like this game. In this movement scene, we can see that uh, there isn't much going on in terms of level of detail. This is in native mode, around 90 FPS in this scene, changing the setting to quality mode. I would say that we are getting about maybe 10 to 15 FPS more, but other than that, no differences in terms of visual appearances. The VRAM usage is a bit less than 10 gigs. This game is having this strange rain effect when rain pop-ups sometimes and sometimes it disappears. I don't know why. In DLSS performance mode, we are getting maybe 10 to 15 FPS more. The VRAM usage is about the same, maybe a bit less, and we are still getting this strange rain effect around us, but other than that, the game looks quite okay, and I would say that at the very first glance, I wouldn't distinguish this from native. In DLSS Ultra Performance mode, the distance looks definitely blurry. We are getting even more FPS, maybe 10 to 50 more. The VRAM usage is a bit lower, but other than that, nothing special actually. It looks very the same in terms of these visual appearances. I wanted to include Red Dead Redemption 2 because upcoming Grand Theft Auto 6 will most likely use the same game engine, although we will see whether it will be available on PC before major DLSS version has been released. And um, I would say that this game looks quite good regardless of what kind of settings we are using, but of course in DLSS performance and ultra performance settings we are seeing these kind of glitches in quick movement. DLSS quality looks very nice to me in terms of visual appearance without that many glitches whatsoever.
In terms of performance in this static scene, we can see that the performance is quite the same across the board, although the power consumption is lower in these different DLSS settings and also VRAM usage as well. I would say the biggest differences are coming again from the background world where it looks extremely blurry in ultra performance mode. As a conclusion, I would say it's extremely hard to criticize NVIDIA's DLSS technology as a whole. NVIDIA has actually brought us something very few of us could actually expect. Free performance not only for the latest generations, but for older GPU generations as well. This technology can definitely bring some extra life in those near to useless GPUs when it comes to modern games. I really hope that Nvidia will continue this path, improving DLSS technology as a whole and still keep some focus on the gamers who cannot afford the very latest and the greatest. I'm also working on a follow up video focusing on this same topic, so I hope you will stick around. My name is Leo and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.